<clears throat> Hello and welcome to episode two of Artemis Unleashed. It is just myself and Shark this time. We're happy to have you guys here. Uh, welcome, thanks for listening. If you haven't checked out the last episode, it'd be a good place to get to know everybody. But this is also a good jumping off part, jumping off point. Excuse me, Shark. How are you doing today? I'm doing great this morning. It's, uh, it's an early morning, and uh, I'm feeling alive. That's exciting. I uh, really hate how my day's going so far. We just spent 500 bucks at Lowe's um, for not even like anything exciting, just like random tools, garden hose, some tree snippers, just random shit because we just bought a house. So I, I, we don't own anything yet. Yeah. That's, that's uh, welcome to being a homeowner, I guess. Yeah, that's the thing that they don't warn you about is like you need stuff. And we don't have stuff. We also only have, I have, we have my Golf GTI and my wife's Toyota Camry. So we don't have like anything large enough to carry anything. Of, and my wife is, wants to do all these projects and create shelves and God knows what. And yeah, it's it's a struggle. It is. I mean, hey, at least you got a, a good summer pack for uh, just a bunch of shit to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't, I don't keep myself busy enough. Um. <laughs> So one thing, one story that I wanted to tell that I didn't tell in the last podcast is uh, I actually met Mark Weber at Circuit of the Americas. Oh, really? So for folks that don't know, Mark Weber is a, a former Red Bull driver. He was teammates with Sebastian Vettel um, in 2012, I think was the latest he raced in. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I met him at Circuit of the Americas. So when they did the World Endurance Championship, there was like, I don't know, a few hundred people in attendance that weekend. Like it was not Lone Star Le Mans didn't have a ton of people. And so they let everyone meet the drivers. And what they did is that you could walk out onto the main straight and they just set up a little like fence ring. So it was like a rectangle of fence and it came out of the pits. Drivers would walk along the inside of the, of the ring. You would be standing on the outside. Drivers would kind of pass you. Um, and he's coming to me and I don't really care about, autographs at all like it's never been something that i really do much with but i was like that's that's mark Weber. that's a cool autograph to have i should get him again (laughs) not a lot of people it's not like there's like arms reaching over my shoulder it's just it's like the person to my left me the person to my right so mark Weber starts coming down the line and there's someone ahead of them that is passing out little cards that have like the the car on it, the team logo, the number of the car, the the drivers that are going to be on it because World Endurance, so it's more than one driver. And the guy uh, is fucking with it and doesn't get me a card. So he goes right past me. So Mark Weber's coming. Like I can see him coming and I am trying to scramble for a card. I finally get a card from the guy. And that point, Mark jumps me in line and goes to the next person. I go, Mark. Come back. Cause again, it's not like a ton of people. Like it's, it's, I can reach out and touch him. I go, Mark, come back. And he totally ignores me. Big leagues me. Doesn't say a word. Just keeps on signing. And I, I decided to mess them a little bit. I said, Mark, Mark, we could have had something special. We could have meant something. Could have been together. And he looked at me and smiled and went back in the pits. Didn't give me. <laughs> uh, they're going to be like, Oh, then they give me a whole tour of the whole pits. And <laughs> No, nothing. That dude left. I also, uh, I met Patrick Dempsey that same day. So for folks yeah. that that watch, uh, uh, what's the show? Oh, Grey's Anatomy. Um, Patrick Dempsey is McDreamy on Grey's Anatomy. But he also owns a, a Le Mans team. He owns Proton Dempsey Racing. And he's a little tiny fellow. Little bitty. The internet says he's 5'10". He's like 5'6". Bone I skinny. I should be scared then. What, what does that mean? I'm 5'10". So you must be like 6'2". 6'0". 6'0". Okay, not too bad. But I'm fat, so it looks less imposing. It's not like it's like a good six foot. Like it's a very... (laughs) Not like basketball level, like just more like human level. Yeah, I'm built like a pear. (laughs) So, uh... Anyway, so so he's hella short. Yeah, no, he's tiny. So the his like IMDb says he's five ten. He's fucking a little fella. A little fella. He's super hilarious. nice though. He's polite. That was, that was my whenever I'm talking to to people, they're either if they're into racing, then I mention Mark Weber. If they're not into racing, I mention Patrick Dempsey because I'm like hey, everybody knows Grey's Anatomy. That's pretty gone. good. That's a good combo though. I'm I'm like around the corner from Laguna Seca, and so when the endurance championship or IMSA was at Laguna Seca. Uh, I met a bunch of fans that were just coming through the area just to see the championship. And it was super cool because there was like, I met a whole family that was invited out 
from Lamborghini to go and watch them race. And they were get to be like, they got to be a part of uh, the entire team. So they were in the pits watching them do all their stuff. It was really cool. They were telling me all about it. It was a, uh, it's, it's interesting just because it's just right around the corner. Man, don't you wish you were rich? Yeah, I, I really do. I wish I fucking was just, just show up whenever. My wife is convinced we're rich and we're not. She's always like, let's buy a first class and we can get a suite. I don't know where she thinks this money's coming from. She sees the budget. <laughs> nothing bad, no, nothing. Didn't you say, I think, on stream once, she makes like marginally more than you? So it's like, <laughs> you know the budget. <laughs> she makes $325 a year more than me. Yeah. And she is insufferable about it. She's like, that's my money, not your money. They're like, I'm the breadwinner. Oh, shit. Hey, that's enough for at least one first class seat. I'm creating a new position at work. Like I just got a new job a few months ago and I was like, the way we do this one thing is stupid. I'm going to do it, but it, you're going to have to pay me more. And I'm doing it just to get more than her again. I, the, the world needs to go back in order. I've always made more than my wife. It's time to go back. She had her moments of glory. Time to regress. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So Sharky, let me ask you something. Uh, yeah. If, if you don't want to answer this, that's fine. But, uh, you know, I think one thing about small streamers that a lot of people don't realize is they have like a regular life outside of these things. So content okay. creators can't just create content. They have work, school, whatever. Uh, I want to hear what is what do you want to do once you're out of school? Uh, I'm going to school right now for computer science. So it'd be interesting to see. Um, being where I work, it's it it lends well. I can't say where I work. Which, uh, so, but it's okay. I can't say it either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but being where I work, it, it, it hopes to be interesting in for the future. But if not, I also have other avenues of, uh, other connections that I can utilize that, that learning or just as like an internship for when I get my degree. So it'll be fun, but I'm also worried that it's just like very oversaturated just computer science is like the thing. If I don't know something, it's like business and accounting. It's like, oh, well, I just do computer science. I'll be fine. So uh, that's the only thing I'm worried about for sure. Yeah. So for those that watched the first episode, so I just showed up. I just arrived and Shark and B-Roy took care of the technology. B-Roy did audio and Shark did the video. And so before we did uh, another episode, I was trying to get out of them like, all right, how'd you do? How'd you use this? What do we use for that? Whatever. And Shark being a computer science major is a fucking nerd and can understand things easier than I can. And so he was like, ah, oh, just use this program. And that's all the direction I got. And I, I get in there and I like, this shit looks terrifying. This is not a friendly, this is a, you can tell this is a tool built for people that know how to use it, not for a dumb dumb like me. And it didn't even occur to Shark because he's got this computer science mentality. I tell him to figure it out. <laughs> I was like, yeah, fuck you. Yeah, just, just do this and you'll be fine. Like, don't worry. <laughs> in the middle of my shift, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> had no idea. It was an absolute truck. So we had a, another guest planned for the second episode. We'll have to do another one later with them because I didn't want to just do the same conversation twice. We actually filmed a whole episode, uh, but there was tons of technology issues and I fucked the whole thing up. So the, that person will be back later, but... That's why Shark is here to help me with that, <laughs> with the technology. <laughs> it's a two parter. It's uh, the tutorial and then the podcast. I mean, you can't go wrong. <laughs> Christ for sick. Um, I was going to tell <laughs> I was going to tell the story. I got raided uh, the other week. Oh, my God. You are blurry as hell. You it looks like you lost. Looks like my uh -oh. contact wandered off for you. Uh Oh, oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Holy shit. There you in 160 P. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, I got raided by Lucas Blakely on Thursday, yeah. on Wednesday. Yeah, and it I made me that. think if there was a bingo card for people to be raided by in the F1 space, I'm really close to bingo because I've been raided by Yarno, Lucas Blakely, GB68 twice, and Tom once. So who's, uh, who makes it bingo? We're going to find out. Is it going to be like, are we going like smaller down the scale or just another like huge content creator? I Listen, I believe in myself and my own ability to have dumb luck and have someone happen on my stream and want to raid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, out of out of those people, who do you feel like was like the most caught off guard? Because I feel like the Lucas Blakely, didn't you hit like 300 views? 
Yeah, so so Yarno and Lucas just raided and fucked off, which is totally understandable. Like, I'm not expecting them to stay and stream and talk to me. Like, they brought several hundred people. Um, GB, uh, excuse me, Tom stayed for a little bit. He actually did chat for a little bit. Um, and that was a huge one because that was like like 900 people or so. Like, that was a pretty big one when he raided. Uh, GB, though, is the nicest by far. So he actually, I like followed him after it happened. I... <laughs> The other thing, this sounds so terrible. So I'm very new to the F1 content space. I've done a lot of like F1 in the real world, but the F1 content space, I didn't know. So I didn't know any of these people. I don't know who any of them would. I kind of had seen Tom like a little bit on TikTok. Yeah. So I knew that one, but like I didn't know GB68 and everyone in chat is like, dude, he's the fucking motherfucker. Like that's one of the biggest content creators out there. And I'm like, oh. So I went to his Instagram and I followed him on Instagram. And I sent him a message. I said, hey, I, I doubt you'll ever see this, but just thank you for the raid. I appreciate it. It was very kind of you. All the best. Something to that effect. He's he's so nice. He followed me back. He responded. Uh, he'll wow. like watch my stories, like my stories. He raided a second time after that. Like he's the super he's a super cool guy. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I feel like. Um, everyone looks up to the esports guys a lot, like uh, like Yarno and Blakely, but that's the thing that they feel like they do lack a little bit is that personality that everyone likes in the streamers so it's like this opposite like dichotomy in like the the content space and like almost like every game that has like an esports so you have the guys that are just really good and then you guys have the, they give the guys that are just really good personalities and they don't really cross much and the people that i feel like that can blend the two of those to find very good success college boy used the word dichotomy good for him yeah look at that i'm i'm trying to use english <laughs> Yeah, they're super nice. And that's I think that's true of all content creation where like you can either be really good at the game and just rely on like I'm a fucking man and these people are going to watch me because I'm amazing at it. Or you can be funny and engaging and and friendly. And I'm definitely shit. the latter. <laughs> I don't. I That's what I. And, so that's the awkward parts. Whenever anyone like that raids, I'm like, y'all about to see the most mediocre shit you've ever seen. Don't that's worry a, about that's it. That's some hick racing, bro. <laughs> well, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I actually had a I had Swave also in my chat yesterday. Yeah, Swave, I, I, I like Swave. Like, he's he's chill. He's super chill. Never seen or heard from. Him. I saw I saw the partner check mark and I was like, that's someone I should probably pay attention to. I don't fucking know who it is though. <laughs> yeah, there's. Uh, I feel like the people that like just hit the level to hit partner, they're kind of like still unknown too. And then once I feel like you hit about hundred to one hundred fifty average at that point, you have a little bit of a name in the space. Yeah, so for folks that don't know, um, Twitch is broken into three steps. So anyone can stream on Twitch for free, um, and you start just as a Twitch streamer. Once you gain like a very small following, you can become an affiliate, which is where they actually monetize it. So you can like start making money. You have sub revenue, all that stuff. It's very small. It's a three average that you have to get there. But to get partner, you have to have a 75 average. Um, From non-rated too. It's like it has to be all self-grown. Yeah, so a partner is like, that's a legitimate, they, they have a legitimate following, like a bunch of people are there. Um, and that's, I think that's the goal for a lot of people. I really wish they would have like a middle step, though. Like, it'd be nice to have something to shoot for that's like a like a 40 average or something that gives some benefit there. Yeah, I. but the thing is, you have to think is like, how, like, what would they give a creator that hits that point? Like, partner is like a contract. I wish it was the 70-30 split because then it would entice people to actually try to stream for partner. Right. Like you go from like getting nothing to affiliates. So you're getting paid. Now you could like if I get to partner now I can get paid more versus having to what was it? Three hundred and fifty for the new partner plus. Yeah, I think that's also like a, a common misconception is I thought so I had never done like Twitch stuff before I decided to stream on Twitch. I, mm. I made an account for the first time to stream. I'd never like watched it or hung out or it. So I didn't understand. I thought when I got affiliated, I was like, I saw that it's ad revenue. And I said, oh, mm -hmm. awesome. Like, I'll, I'll make a little, you know, I'm not expecting to, like, quit my job. But yeah. ad revenue, that's awesome. That'd be some money. No. It's like fucking, like, micro pennies. Like, you just get fuck all. I think it's it's like a dollar fifty per thirty five hundred views or something to that effect. Or maybe it's two fifty. It's not. But then much. there's also, like, if you do the. Uh, what is it? Is it three minutes an hour? Then you get the 50-50 split or something like that. But when you're not, like you're getting even more. 
like or even less on the fucking ads it's it's stupid yeah. I don't know. Well, it's a very good topical discussion. What are your opinions on kick? A lot of people are talking about how kicks the future. What is what are your thoughts there? I I think it's good and bad. I think in a lot of competing technology areas that we see now, there's in some places not competition at all. Like I feel like for YouTube, there's just no video competition. Like YouTube could do something that pisses everybody off and they're like, "Well, we don't really have an alternative, so we just have to fucking deal with it." But for Twitch and for streaming, you know, there's YouTube, there was Mixer, there's Facebook, but there's now Kick, and Kick seems to have like the most traction now compared to I think any other platform we've seen, and like a legitimate threat now. I think the biggest issue that I see for it is it's just so unregulated, and it, it, the downside is like it's backed by gambling, so it's like if you gamble, you're making fucking a shit ton of money because there's like all those people are averaging like five, 6,000 views just from just throwing more money to make more money. It's really fucking weird. I think it's a flash in the plan. I think a uh, flash in the pan. Excuse me. I think that a lot of the smaller streamers that are hearing that it's a better split are, are like, I should go to there. They, but they don't make enough money anyway. They don't have enough subs anyway for it to really make that much of a difference. And like the way, if you go to kick right now, it's green Twitch is all it is. Like they didn't yeah. change the UI at all. It looks exactly like Twitch except green. I just don't think they are, they're throwing money at a problem, but I don't think they have any kind of ingenuity to make it a long-term solution. They're just doing what the creators want and nothing that would actually would better the platform. Um, which I think is the concern. It's fair. It's fair. Um, but I think what would be interesting is how Twitch comes back. I think we've seen like they try to do the you're good. <laughs> they try to do like the the branding where like they try to limit how much you could like do burn in ads on your stream uh, or like now partner plus. But like there's got to be another step that Twitch has got to take to really like squash kick i just don't understand because twitch is not profitable and has never been profitable like I, I don't think they've ever turned a profit ever they're just burning amazon's money so like what 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 is that delta you know when is that going to change and what can they do because they're obviously taking more money from streamers but sorry who's that i'm on <laughs> you're so adorable um no yeah like they're taking more from tw uh from streamers and then that kick is like, oh, well, we're going to give you more, but you're going to have like a third of your viewership because there's like fucking nobody on kick compared to Twitch. Yeah. And I've thought about doing a YouTube stream every once in a while, but I just it's uh, to me like I don't spend a lot of time on YouTube. I like the idea, though, that YouTube can be like I can put my long form there. I can put my short form there. I can put a podcast there. I can do the community post and I can like it's one place that you can uh, theoretically do everything. But I don't know. I just, it doesn't it doesn't feel like the place to be live streaming. Yet, I, I feel like overall it makes sense. Like you said, like your, all your content can be in one spot. And I think the long form and the short form, obvi like, obviously short form is just like like TikTok. That's just in every like social media platform at this point. So it's like that's just going to be a thing. But like for video content, obviously. But I think it for for live streaming, it just it doesn't have like the chat benefits. I think the streaming and the quality that you can get in there is great. And they, they win over Twitch on that. But the chat stuff, they just lack. And I think that's what Ludwig, when he first came to YouTube, he had to pretty much just make on his own is how to make YouTube chat more like Twitch chat. You have demons going through your house. I, something's up. I don't know. My, my <laughs> dogs are little psychos. <laughs> oh, this is a good story to tell. I, I meant to tell us in the other episode, but it got canceled. Uh, did I tell you about the time my dog ate glass? Oh, fuck. So, <laughs> so I have two dogs uh, and, and one of them is a mix uh, and she's a fucking psychopath. Like she's, she can, li it's like that TikTok sound where it's like, I think I'm allergic to tap water and then fuck yeah, concrete. Those are my two dogs. <laughs> so I have a mutt and I have a purebred. The mutt is primarily pit mix, but she's got some other stuff. And that dog is, sh she can live through anything. She's like lives in the fallout games. She's perfect. She can, she's eating drywall. She's eating the disposable razor, including the blades. We never found the blades. 
Um, she's eaten uh, part of a door. Uh, she's eaten tons of underwear. I've pulled my underwear out of that dog's ass, which could not have been a fun experience for her. The fuck? I'm a large man, and that is not a good deal for her. Um, but yeah, one time she ate. So I, I we put her in the kennel this is before we got the second dog. And I came home and opened the bedroom door, which is where her kennel is. And she was like at the door. Like she was out of the kennel at them. I'm like, that's weird. And then I kicked uh, something on the floor and I reached down and I, I pick up a wine glass that's got like broken edges and dried <laughs> blood on the edge. Ooh. And I looked down at the dog. And I'm like, do you eat a fucking wine glass? And she's just all <laughs> happy to see me. Like, all right. I got it. We got to go to the vet. Get the dog. Take her to the vet. It was during COVID, so we had to, like, wait outside with the dog before they could see her. They, like, looked her over. I think they might have done an x-ray. I don't remember. And they called me, and they go, she's going to be fine until she's not, and then it'll be too late. I'm like, okay, is she fine now? Explain. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, she's fine now. You know, if basically what happens is if the glass, like, cuts up her intestines, then it'll, that's the end of it. Like, there's no saving that. So they gave her some, some like, high-fiber food to clump to the glass. Sent us on our merry way. That dog was fine. No problems at all. Damn. Who'd have thought? Just high fiber fucks off glass. And but the damn, other one, that... the purebred is like, he literally has never had a solid shit in his life. Like he's, he's a sickly little skinny. I have the, I have a old ass black cat that I got from when I was in like kindergarten. That's still fucking kicking. Like I'm 20 now. And I like kindergarten was like, what? When I'm like five, this cat's like easily like 14 or 15 years old. And this motherfucker is just this long ass, like, uh, I think we call him the back, uh, the black mamba. Like he's fucking huge. And, but now he's just so old. He's just starting to get gray hairs, but this motherfucker is a prince at my place. My <laughs> dinner comes. He does not go. He requests to be picked up and moved, transported over. On a little pillow, Living, like a little velveteen. Yeah, fucking like a, the high life moved over. But then every opportunity, the door opens. This motherfucker runs. I'm like, you you have like a, the life of a king, but then you want to leave. So it it's funny, but that's like my it's my fucking. All thing. right. So <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm going to let you decide if you want to cut this out. So we had Mexican food for lunch. Yeah. And we had ramen yesterday for lunch. So spicy mm-hmm. ramen yesterday. And I have horrendous IBS. And my wife just texted me. Well, sorry, didn't just text me. Text me at the start of the podcast, but I, I was not paying attention. She goes, I am concerned with your well-being after walking into the bathroom after you. <laughs> Second message. And this is like 10 minutes later. So it just stewed. For t- I flushed. It's not like it's still there. Like It's just the remnants. Oh, that's too fucking funny. I'm concerned for your well-being. <laughs> It'd be like that. It'd be like that. I've, I, I have, you know, sometimes you just got to hop in the shower afterwards. Sometimes you just need to turn on the fan and leave the door open. Just uh, flush it out. I had to, I had to film a podcast, though. Couldn't couldn't bathe myself. <laughs> that actually reminds me. I did a 24 hour stream yeah. uh, over New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. And I had like sub rewards in it. So it was like if we hit 20 subs, I'll, you know do whatever I don't remember what they all were but one of them was I would twerk if I had Uh a certain number of subs and the next one after that was that I would wear my wife's clothes so it was like 50 subs twerk 60 clubs whatever it ended up being and I got that was right after I got raided uh, by Tom Um, Mm -hmm. and so they saw the little like timer and someone started big dick in it and got me to the the twerking like amount oh my god And this clip is still out there I twerked with visible swamp ass. <laughs> like literally you could see it right up the crack of my, with like 700 people in stream or whatever the fuck. I don't know how many people were there. It was a lot. Oh bro. That's fucking hilarious. And then I put on a blouse right afterwards. Oh, lovely. She didn't like it because I ruined it. Oh, <laughs> how did you like ripped it? I fucking stretched that bitch out. <laughs> Honey, give me the, the shittiest shirt you've got. That's pretty much what it was. Yeah, so, sorry. I got I didn't check my phone until right then in the podcast, and that's what <laughs> greeted me. <laughs> Honey, we just got the place. Let's keep it in one piece. <laughs> we have two bathrooms. It's the funniest part. 
I definitely really? could have used the like off bathroom, but I chose not to. <laughs> you're going to go to sleep, but you're just going to still smell it. And it's going to be like. <laughs> so how many podcast views do we need to get for you to move out of your mom's house? Uh, A lot. Like a lot. <laughs> you didn't want a legitimate question. You didn't want to like stay near wherever you're going to college. I do. I, I go to community college. Yeah, but in your own place. I live in California. I live in like the most expensive state there is. Stop being poor. I don't know. What to tell you. <laughs> yeah, let me just get a corporate job. I, I tell you what, I, so I did what you did where I did the first two years of college in my folks house yeah. and the next two years in, but uh, to be fair, where I went to school, they had like student housing, which I think community okay. college doesn't usually have like no. dedicated. At least not my school. Yeah. So we, I lived there, I think it was like 600 bucks a month, but I, mm-hmm. I had four roommates and each person paid 600 bucks a month. Um, I would never go back. I couldn't do it. I, same with Leroy. Like I could not live with my parents again. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I would, I would like to move out. But at the same time, I'm also not in any rush because of the price of living. I'm just like, I'm going to take what I have and be so OK with it. Uh, if I go to a full four year college, then I'll obviously take the dorms then. But uh, I definitely will not be planning to move out anytime soon. Money in is more important than money out right now. That's fair. It's a good it's a good life lesson to the youngins that are that are listening. Yeah. Take care of your finances. Please save money while you can. Pay his dividends later. Like, look, you've got a house now. We do. Yeah, we have a house. Uh, you you want to know what kind of hurts, though? And I don't know if this is even something to talk about. But uh, so my I have a very good friend that lives across the street from me. It was across mm-hmm. the street from me, same neighborhood, same house, same floor plan, same builder, same everything. Yeah. Bought in early 2020. I bought just now. He pays fourteen hundred dollars a month for his mortgage. I pay twenty four hundred a month. Ugh. An interest. Yeah. So speaking of California, what do you think of the submarine that disappeared? Um, it's it's it, I think it's controversial. It's pretty it, it's pretty funny because, well, it's not funny. People died. But what's funny is <laughs> what's funny is they you all got in. It's tragic, but, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those moments where like we're all going to go to hell for making fun of it. Uh, no, I think it's. I think it's interesting because a lot of them knew about kind of the risks that were involved. I think honestly, the funniest part to me is all of it was being controlled by a fucking like 2010 Logitech controller. Cheaper than an Xbox controller. Like a yeah, it's like 25 Xbox bucks. Controller is more expensive than this thing. Yeah. Like a $25 fucking controller. The um, funniest part to me is that James Cameron, we're going to link back to avatar two episodes in a row. Fucking the guy that directed avatar is the the person they keep asking about this. He's the expert in the submersible field that keeps talking about the vanished submersible. I that is the funny part because they <laughs> he's like, well, this could only happen if this and this. And I'm like, you're a fucking director. Like, why are you going to him? And it's just like <laughs> it's like the lack of well, the push for ingenuity looks in hindsight like the most like scrap together piece of shit they could have done. Hang on. I don't want to misquote this. There's a pretty hilarious. Uh, there's a pretty hilarious quote from an email. Hold on. Let me find this. Oh yeah. Like the, he sent out the CEO sent out like an email of like saying of like why that people should do it. Or like there was like a family that decided to pull out. Because they were worried about the what could happen. Any no, and there was apparently also I just saw on on uh, on TikTok like yesterday. There's a guy, a YouTuber that was supposed to get on it and has documented like his whole time like prepping for the dive, and then last second there was like bad weather and they couldn't go, and so he wasn't able to go, and he's like, he was so happy, like obviously in hindsight, like very thankful that. He wasn't able to go because that would have been him crushed in a fucking tube, a soda can. <laughs> I found the email. Uh oh. <laughs> oh god, pop ups. <laughs> Get that ad blocker, bro. Listen, you're, you're a computer science major. I'm not about that life. Uh, can you hear me still? Yeah. 
So it says an email uh, <laughs> says, I implore you to, this is not from the, the CEO. I implore you to take every care in your testing and C trials and to be very, very conservative. As much as I appreciate entrepreneurship and innovation, you are potentially putting an entire industry at risk. And he responded, we have heard the baseless cries of, quote, you are going to kill someone, unquote, way too often. I take this as serious as a personal insult. Yeah, I'm like, what? Come on. Hey, what a dumb dumb. Yeah, for real. Fucking, that's funny. What do you think about it, though? Uh, well, f- first and foremost, I always try to not have opinions and things I don't truly understand. Um, and I'll never pretend to have uh, any kind of experience with submersibles. Um, I do have some experience in safety. And with that, there's always, first of all, there's always a set of regulations that governs everything, right? And, and even if there's not specifically a set of regulations for submersibles, I'm sure there's a best practices that is typically used. And in my industry, the industry that I work in, so I, I work in as a project manager for construction. Construction has a lot of safety rules and it's very clear. And you do not operate without those safety rules. You just don't do it. Human life is not worth it. Human injury is not worth it, right? You know, the, the old saying is, uh, why would you trust a three-fingered carpenter, right? It's nubby. Um, mm-hmm. It's the same thing. So for me, you know, if I'm one building something, that is going to explore a place that a handful of people have been and two taking regular fucking people that didn't know what they signed up for with me. I'm going to make sure it's, it's, it's very safe. Um, and there are ways to rate these things. You can put them in pressure vessels and test to certain, you know, depths and all that fun stuff. And that doesn't seem to have been done. However, caveat to all that, I'm not James Cameron. So I don't know anything about submersibles. Yeah, I think the one thing that I'm the most concerned about all of it, though, is that apparently the Navy knew the day it happened that it like that it imploded. Yet this was it was dragged out over like four days. Yeah, that's what they they have, like the audio recording of it. But I guess you can't really be sure from an audio. It could have been a whale farting. I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess the only thing I could see them thinking it was possibly was some sort of bomb or explosion and so sort of like like what the fuck like if they're on like high alert and then after a while once i guess they caught wind of like this like submersible gun missing they're like oh we heard this like four days ago yeah i don't know i think the titanic is cool i remember seeing the titanic not in theaters the first time because i'm not old enough but they re-released it and went to theaters and i was there on a double date with a friend of mine and i leaned over to the friend and i was like you want to go get some snacks and he's like the movie's almost over because we were like an hour in. Mm-hmm. And I was like, the movie's not almost over. We have we have another two hours to go. <laughs> really? I'm like, yeah. All right, let's go get some snacks. Yeah, it's and like then I a... saw some boobies. Uh, oh yeah, Peyton. Have you not seen Titanic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was I was I had I had to do a double take because I had to think about it again. It's been a while since I've seen it. Paint me like your French girl. Fascinating. Fascinating. I think I have one more question and that'll probably take us through enough time. Let me ask, do you have a favorite movie? This is a good trivia Interstellar. item for Shark. Inter- you were very fast on that. Interstellar? Yeah. Do you know what happened? What? I feel like it's a complicated movie. I don't know. Maybe you can... Oh, oh, like, like tell the story a little bit? No, sorry. It was a joke about how it's a complicated movie and no one oh. understood what happened. Oh, uh, yes, I have. I do understand what happened. I've also seen it like 20 times. It's like by far one of the longest movies I've watched that I'm okay with. I'm sorry. I know you like Avatar a little bit, but Way of the Water was too long for me to actually like it. Well, hold on. Hold on. T for time. T for time. T for time. Do you not have the attention span for a three hour movie? For a three and a half hour movie that was half of it just like this random story and then to the final plot? No. I think that you youngins are ruining society. I just think that Avatar Way of the Water could have been like maybe 30 to 45 minutes shorter and it would have been a better movie. So I don't I personally I didn't I liked the first Avatar significantly more than the second Avatar personally. Um, Oh, I agreed. 
But when it was coming out, there were a lot of people that were like, I can't sit through a three hour movie. And that is what I was afraid you were saying, because that really bums me out when people say that. Because like to me, if the movie's worth three hours, it's it's always oh, good. To yeah. Watch. Like if if the story is worth the entire three hours, but I feel like half the stuff that was in the movie or like a, like a decent amount of it could have been just like this, like spin off practically of, of the movie where it was like, I feel like it was just like this random like filling just to add to like the the movie time see i had a very different take because I, I thought it was all like i actually said this when we left the movie theater i said that was all world building and it would normally bore me but it was done so well that i was just captivated every every part of it i was like there was not i did say i don't think i can watch that movie a second time i don't think it's yeah. worth a rewatch the movie itself like the story i love like it was it was very interesting I liked the ending. I like how they brought it. They brought the, the the military dude back, the commander. That was interesting. I liked that. But the like going off the fucking Narnia type shit, like that was just random. Well, yeah, you had to run. My favorite yeah. movie. So I have two answers to this question. So my favorite movie that's standalone is the movie Rush, uh, which is a mm. Formula One movie. I think we covered that last time. Yeah. My favorite movie. Overall, though, if you can take it in the context of its series, is Avengers Endgame. I fucking cry like a baby every time I watch Avengers Endgame. <laughs> like an infant child. <laughs> yeah, that was... It, it was sad. It, I, like For me, Iron Man was like the guy. Like, growing up, like, in the like Avengers universe. Or the Marvel universe. But, like, seeing him die, I was like, damn. Like, I just... I feel like I lost a part of me. Like, I was like, fuck. See, I wasn't even sad. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Sorry. Fucking Hulk can. Yeah. You gotta take care of that thing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. For, yo- for all of those that are listening, I will describe what is happening. Funky has turned into Hulk Iron Man. He's got the the Hulk uh, Infinity Stone too. Gauntlet. Oh, really? I can kind of hear it. And then you, he has the Iron Man helmet on, which is uh, the most lovable nerdy shit I think I've ever seen. I'm pretty proud of myself. Also, both of these were gifts from my wife. I oh, that's right. that's even better. That's fucking amazing. Next upgrade is going to be getting a fully motorized Iron Man helmet. No, freaks me out. I don't want to get my face trapped. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that's beautiful. But you're you have like a whole display over there, too. Yeah, so uh, that's the biggest problem about moving into this new space is I have a lot of shit. I have a lot of shit. I have like 200 Funko Pops. Oh my and, god. Like, I don't even in know boxes what or? Yeah. Let's say, like, are you collecting them like in boxes or are they out for display? Oh, okay. They're in the boxes still. So I take them out of the box, which I know is a, a hot topic for some people, but they're in the boxes now because they're super easy to move in the boxes. But I just don't know where to put them all. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta sit down one day and just feel like, how am I gonna make this my office? Well, so that was part of the reason that today was so expensive because we bought stuff to make shelves, which is going to barely start. Like I have 400 movies, like physical Blu-ray movies. That's what the shelves are for. Like, I have some. We have so every cool. gaming system. All the, I have Gundam models. I got this shit. I got this is kind of cool. I actually grabbed this. So this is signed and verified by the Nightcrawler actor. That's from, fucking awesome. Yeah, from the. Did I you get that signed second. or did you buy it signed? No, 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 no. Not going to like Comic Con? No, but I should. We want to. Uh, I was going to say though, I didn't even cry because I was sad for Iron Man. I don't cry at sad stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. I I don't know what this like bitch disease is that I have. But whenever a movie scene is done very well, like if it if it's like a good movie scene, I have a physical reaction and it like my my breath catches. I have tears running down my face. So in the final like charge scene, the the Avengers assemble. I'm a fucking wreck. I'm like, <laughs> I, I cannot be left. Just alone. knowing like the ending is coming and it's like, damn, the last one I'll get. 
Well, cool, man. This is very good. Uh, thank you all for watching and listening. If you prefer audio only medium, we're, we have this on Spotify. If you prefer audio and video, we have this on YouTube, either or. Watch it either place. Um, Shark, are you going to be having your, any of your own content coming out soon you want to plug? Uh, not at the moment. A lot of it is still the Artemis stuff. I'm still working on for that to be uh, a little bit more sustainable before I can come back to my own. So uh, be on the lookout for more Artemis content. We have some more planned. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much, Funky, for having me on. Of course, can you give the people a little insight? If they want to get more involved in Artemis, what's the easiest way to do? Is it to watch the creator streams, is it to, to follow them on social media? What What is it that helps the team the most? Um, it's going to be definitely uh, ArtemisEsports.com, our website. All of our information, a lot of updates, a very um, professional page to be able to see all of our content all in one place. Or Esports Artemis on Twitch. TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, uh, to find us. Oh, and YouTube to find us. I made it cool, easy. Cool. Sorry, go ahead. I, I made that super easy. Easy peasy. Uh, for me, it's Funky T Bone on Twitch and YouTube, and Funky T Bone TV on Instagram. Um, thank you all for watching so much. I do appreciate it. This was episode two. Episode three, we will have. I think two more guests, if we can manage it, please let us know in the comments what you want us to talk about. We really don't come into this with much structure. We try to keep it to somewhat racing, sim racing, you know, content, that kind of stuff. But we're here for whatever. So let us know what you want to hear about. Ask us any questions in the comments. Thank you for watching. And as always, happy hunting. Bye, guys.